Hello, this is Rodrigo Gudinho, and I'm the director of The Breach. Rodrigo Gudinho <laughs> has been... We've been having fun trying to pronounce his name because of how I talk. I do apologize. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Matthew. You did good on that one, I have to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Rodrigo good. Goudino. It'll be the yeah. whole episode will be just about pronouncing your name. <laughs> <laughs> we can just go with Rodrigo for now. <laughs> okay, Rodrigo. Well, Matthew, and you can say whatever you, you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, the breach. Now, I don't know how to uh, begin with this because, wow, it's, it was such it's such an intense movie. Um, like it's first, it's based off the sci-fi um, novel by Nick Cutter. Like, what drew you to? putting this story together. Right. Well, I, I wish I could say it was uh, reading Nick Cutter's book, but in, in fact, the book uh, wasn't finished when I was offered the this particular project. So um, um, normally I write my own stuff and I, I shoot my own stuff, but this was sort of in the middle of the pandemic and, um, you know, uh, Mike Pash from Raven Banner uh, called me up and said, hey, we have this script. Are you interested in doing it? And of course, I was like, ah, it's the middle of the pandemic. Of course, I'm interested in, you know, I'd love to. Um, but of course, I had to look at the script first. And uh, thankfully, uh, it was something I connected with. So, I, you know, I didn't even get a chance to read the, <clears throat> like, I didn't read the book or anything. As I say, it wasn't done by the time I started shooting. As well, I uh, I made some changes to the script, so I, I don't um, really know in the end um, how different the book is from the movie. I just kind of went on my own uh, on my own adventure. Well, wow, so you just branched out. You uh, felt like well, like did you have much creative control with it all, or did you just receive it and go, you know, I'll go with that, and then anyone else behind the scenes kind of push you to tweak it a little bit, or was it just? This is what it is. Uh, no, yeah, there was definitely tweaks. Um, I, I wish I would have had more time. I only had about a month um, of rewrites, um, which is which is very very quick. And it, so so there was a there was a bunch of stuff that I changed. But uh, you know, obviously the main the the the, the, the main story was there. The, the characters were there. I changed some of the dynamics between the characters. If as I remember, the Lovecraft element, <clears throat> I, I think I brought that up. Um, so it was, um, I kind of changed some of the things that were, you know, the idea of what the machine was doing and so on and so forth. So, so there was a, a bunch of stuff that I ended up, um, uh, changing. Um, and then of course, you know, the casting process that even made more, you know, uh, this opportunity for even more changes. So, um, um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know what the breakdown was in the end, but maybe it was. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't even guess honestly. But there was there was a bunch of changes. Yeah, I don't want to give too much away of the movie because uh, I do tend to spoil it a little bit, just trying to get a certain point across. But the, uh, the I guess the first forty five minutes or so. Well, like a lot, most of the movie is very sound. Uh, intense, heavy, and you draw upon the imagery as suspenseful without showing too much gore. There is gore, there is horror, uh, but you, you ride on the sound, the um, the suspense, and which is absolutely beautiful. The visuals are stunning. The acting is superb. Now, um, thank you. Yeah, is that um, your signature style, or what? really thought you can tell the story in that suspenseful way using the power of sound. Right. Well, I think the, uh, the producers thought of me for those reasons, because, you know, my, the, some of the other films that I've done are very uh, atmospheric and so on and so forth. Um, and um, I don't know if I would call it my signature style, but I'm very, you know, I think there's power in, 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 um, in exploring uh, creepy spaces and so on, and having the audience uh, try to guess at what what's happening, uh, 
in the corners of the frame. Um, so yeah, there was, you know, I think, um, the idea that attracted me was that, you know, we could kind of have this moody, almost haunted house movie at the beginning, uh, for the first couple of acts that slowly turns into kind of like a creature feature. Um, and you know, uh, by the end of it, rather than looking in the shadows to see what's in the shadows, you're in the full light of day and you're seeing these like grotesque. Uh, creatures. So it, I, I like that sort of uh, dichotomy. I like that transition. It was new for me. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I think that was some of the ideas I went into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the opening scene uh, overall is it sets the the imagery, the style of it, where uh, where it's a family uh, having a picnic on right near the river, and then suddenly this mysterious boat with whatever it is, <laughs> is just floats up and that sets the premise of it and you just go from there. But is that what you originally envisioned to carry on throughout the entire movie with that? Yes. I mean, for me, the sound is super, super important. Um, you know, obviously when people, when, when you make a movie, you're, you're always, you're thinking of visuals. Um, but the sound is, uh, you know, it enhances those visuals. It can make or break the visuals, really. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm a big fan of giving people information, um, different kinds of information, sometimes contradictory information at the same time. And sound is definitely a great way to do that. Um, yeah, and, you know, pr practically speaking, also it allows you to fill in the frame in ways that, you know, you... You're, what you're, you know, you're, you're, you're having things happen outside of the frame. And so that's kind of informing the scene as well. Um, so yeah, that was, you know, really deliberate. And um, uh, that opening scene, uh, it's funny, uh, I kind of rewrote that several different ways. <laughs> I seem to remember. They're like, yeah, there was, a, yeah. Originally, what I wanted to do was be out on, out in the water shooting towards the the shoreline and have like the, the a bigger picnic scene and have the boat come in and and have the people kind of come to the shore and then everybody scatters but what happened there was because we were shooting during the pandemic which is impossible so i had to put the camera in inland and sort of make it a you know shoot it from from that perspective but it ended up working quite well you know when the the canoe comes in which was hard to to do to make it to that actually but having the canoe come in and then and then people go out to the canoe rather than the other way around. So the, the process of the the makeup is amazing. Like the the special effects, the visual effects, um, the, the design of it. Like your the team that you have with the movie uh, and the cast as well. The, the great like was everyone on set uh, just bonding together like a great family, because, especially during COVID times absolutely yeah that was like a, a, a really uh interesting part i never shot a movie like that before so it ended up being very very intimate and you know because people were um like i said we were all bubbling together and so uh you know normally where people would go home or go into their trailer it's just kind of was sitting around you know they came up we did movie nights there was like a campfire there um where people would kind of gather and sing, you know, if they had the guitars and stuff and just chat and whatnot. Um, um, yeah, it, it was really special that way. It, it was definitely, it, be, it became a community. I think by the end of it, um, you know, I got uh, the crew, I got a lot of um, comments from the crew, like this is just a really great shoot, you know, <laughs> it's just a really fun shoot. Um, but also, you know, we, you know, the, the fact that we're in the middle of the pandemic and, I mean, for many of us, certainly for me, it felt like it was, I was just, I was just kind of, um, you know, reconnecting with people. Um, like I hadn't, I hadn't been in, you know, with, in any social situation for, you know, six or seven months at that time, I would say, uh, yeah, about around that. So it was, it was very, um, it was really special. Certainly for me and um, a lot of the crew. Yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses was uh, he was part of the sound design, all the structuring the score, um, and also a producer for the movie. 
what was it like to have him as part of the um, production of it all? It was great. I mean, you know, it, it added a lot of uh, enthusiasm to, to the project, for sure, knowing that, you know, we're shooting all these scenes that, that Slash is actually going to be uh, writing his music to and, and scoring. I mean, that was a real thrill for me, for sure. Um, you know, I had never worked with Slash in that capacity. I had uh, known him for a while, but would never actually worked, you know, in, in, in that capacity with his music. Um, and of course, he, you know, that's his main, you know, that's what he's known for. That's his, that's his, uh, that's his main talent. Um, so it was a real thrill. Uh, you know, I think when people heard that he was involved, it just kind of, um, it got a lot of people excited on set. That's for sure. Well, did, was it, uh, did he offer at first or what did you approach him or how did he get yeah. on board with that? What, what came first? Right. Well, you know, him and I had been working on a, on a, on a Western actually for a long while that, that never hasn't, well, hasn't yet got off the ground. And so when this came along, um, I mentioned it to him and he said, yeah, send me the script. I sent him the script, the lookbook and stuff. He really liked it. Um, at that time, he was just kind of coming on board as a producer. Um, I don't remember how we floated the idea of like, I think I might've asked him, Hey, you know, would you, do you have time to do a few tracks kind of like that? He was, uh, um, uh, rehearsing for this enormous Guns N' Roses, uh, world tour. Um, and he just happened to have some time. And so he started just, uh, fooling around with ideas. He sent me some stuff. Um, we went back and forth. Um, again, you know, this was during the pandemic, so it was, you know, Zoom calls and blah, blah, blah. But it, it was um, it was really special. It was really great. I'm really happy we got his touch on there. It really made it a much better film, for sure. There is a major twist within the movie. Yeah. Uh, now, which could possibly lead it into perhaps more or a sequel, perhaps. <laughs> it's, yes. it's kind of left. Uh, it's up to the audience, I guess. But if there was a sequel, right. uh, would you like for it to be a sequel and would you love to be a part of continuing on the story if there was that opportunity? I would love there to be a sequel. I, I, I uh, yeah. I think that it would just me be off fantastic. Guard. <laughs> <laughs> like when I went, <gasps> so yeah. it was nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Told yeah, you I'm trying thanks. not to ruin I, it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, I think, um, yeah, I would love to be part of it, sure. Um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, but hopefully the fans will like the movie enough and there'll be enough of a interest in it and we can, we can talk about a sequel. But yeah, absolutely. I would love to, I would love to, to to continue on this ride well fans of uh horror movies in general or uh, of the genre uh what do you think that will take away from this movie i would say this is kind of a, a slow burn sci-fi creature feature you know um and uh, i would you know there would be people ask me what what um what i want audiences to take away from it and normally in my, my movies that i've made they're usually, you know, I'm usually, um, I wouldn't say there's a message, but there's themes and ideas I'm grappling with, and I'm trying to convey certain ideas. Um, with this one, I, you know, I set myself the task of just trying to make an entertaining feature film, really. So, you know, I just hope they have a good time, you know, if they bring out the popcorn, get out the beer, dim the lights, and and throw on the breach and, and, and get into it, you know, and I just hope it works for them. That, that's, that's pretty much it. The breach is available on digital and physical media. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it away. You've got to support the physical media no matter what. <laughs> so uh, it's Absolutely. available. Yep. Available at your favorite uh, store um, and online. Um, and so this has been an absolute Pleasure talking to you, Rodrigo. And thank um, you, Matthew. Yeah, I really wish you all the success with the, the release of the movie as well as any of your future projects because this is not your first foray into the thing. You've actually got a few other horror films under your belt, don't you? 
Yes, I do. And uh, it won't be my last either. I'm working on some new stuff, really exciting. And um, uh, once that, that uh, you know, anything uh, catches fire, I'll make sure, uh, you know, we'll obviously we'll announce and make sure you know. Excellent. Thank you so much for uh, having the chat with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, man. What is all this? Black magic rituals. They are opening the gates to hell here. And I'm telling you, Parsons, he's at the center of it.